Um, I'm not assume that anyone here or everyone here knows about Pena's College Best Place in Brazil, so I'm presenting a few important topics that might be of interest. I will also speak about some test problems we had and some future perspectives. So fossils are considered in Brazilian um, constitution in both ways. First, as goods that belong to the Union, by Union you can understand the nation or the people, and also as cultural heritage. This is not a for discussion, it is like this, written just like this. But in any case, you do have these two views, and therefore it is considered by the Constitution a government duty to protect both fossils and the sites where they are found. Um, our laws are very protective, and this is uh, historically uh, explainable. So, one of the most important Brazilian paleontologists in the 20th century was Loina Price. Despite his name, he was Brazilian, he was born to American parents, he went to Harvard, he was a student of Alfred Shell Romer. He came back to Brazil and he was very concerned about protecting fossil sites because they were being destroyed. So he went up to the president, you know, at the time it was still possible to talk to a president like this, being paleontologist, and he proposed this law. So this is a law from 1942, um, where it's a very, very short law. It basically just says that paleontological sites belong to the nation, so to all Brazil, it's not to the government, something like this. And also, um, it requires that all paleontological excavations are controlled by an organ, by an authority called the DNPM, that's under the Ministry of Mines. Um, therefore, if you work for the government, for instance, you work in a museum or a university that's state or federal, you don't need an authorization because you're already working for the government. But if you work in a private university, a private museum, you are a layman or you are a foreigner, then you just have to apply to get an authorization. That means that you're not prohibited from actually making excavations. You just need, you just need you know, a permit to have these kind of things. So, um, of all foreigners out here who want to have interest in excavating in Brazil, here's the laws. So, it's from 1990, and there's a, uh, there's a decree in this ordinance from the Ministry of Science that actually regulates this decree. And it says that collections should be made as joint pro uh, projects with Brazilian teams. It doesn't mean it's necessary, it's not mandatory, but it will um, make things less bureaucratic for sure. Also, someone who can read the laws in Portuguese and you know, fill out forms in Portuguese would be nice. And also says that all fossil type material should stay in Brazilian institutions. What does this mean? That all the type of material is it's not mandatory to stay in Brazil. So you need all fossil type material to stay in the country, and for every taxon that you found, perhaps 30% stays, and the other 70% you can actually curate it abroad. So that's the legislation. So export is not prohibited. So you are allowed to have fossils outside the country as long as you have the proper authorizations. So how do you do this? You have to go to the DNPA or to the Ministry and to the Ministry of Science, get your paperwork done. Um, you can also have um, temporary exports. For instance, there's a colleague over there who has just brought some fossils from Brazil so he could study it. Uh, it's a temporary export, it's very bureaucratic, that's the problem. But still, there is a legal way to do things. Um, so therefore, what does Brazilian legislation stand for today? Well, uh, international collaborations are not only welcome but encouraged. So we want to work with other people, see? Um, also, it is uh, possible to export and create fossils overseas as long as you have the proper authorization. So it is legally accepted, okay? Um, Therefore, what, why do we want this kind of laws? We want to foment or to help preserve the cultural and scientific heritage of the country. And as well as having fossils, important type fossils, in Brazilian museums, waiting for um, the, to, 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 to help um, Brazilian institutions to give them some, some valuable. So you can have Brazilian students studying and studying these fossils. So, 30% of the fossil of all taxon that you can collect in Brazil that doesn't seem so bad, really. 
So um, our laws are very similar to the ones that you can see in other countries as well. So you can have similar laws in Canada, Italy, Argentina, Mongolia, and China. We are not the only ones like this. Um, our uh, legislation also says that unauthorized collection, commerce, and exportation are crimes. You can go to jail for this. But do we see that's unauthorized? So we're talking about collection. You can get authorization to make collections in Brazil. You can, uh, with the proper authorizations, export fossils. And therefore, if you have an authorization, you should theoretically also commerce fossils, sell them. So do we have anyone selling fossils in Brazil legally right now? No, but we have some precedent. So there was this mining company that used to sell permanent petrified wood before. They don't sell anymore because they actually sold more wood than what they, they were allowed to. So that gave them trouble legally. But theoretically, you could do this. You just had to ask for proper authorization. So what are the problems that we have with Brazilian fossils or have been having fossils so far for so many years? Um, most fossils that we see here outside the country um, are from illegal collection, commerce and exploitation. And we're not talking just about a handful of fossils. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of fossils that left the country illegally in the last few years. For instance, all the ones from the Arabic Basin. So I am not aware of any authorizations given to people to export them permanently outside the country, and that's the problem. So um, when we buy this kind of fossils, um, they are all from a place in the middle of the northeastern Brazil that's very poor. We have very poor people and communities over there. And uh, they still mine commercially all these places, so there is a legal activity going on. So they use the minerals and rocks, whatever, and they find these fossils during the mining activities. So it's not the mine owner who took them. Uh, it's the miners themselves, the people who are digging. They take the fossils, put it outside, and they try to sell it for, I don't know, 10, 20 dollars. I'm really helping these people by buying fossils from the black market. We're not giving any taxes money, that's tax evasion at to say at least. Um, there are no um, long-term measurements or really mid-term measurements to help these people by buying fossils from them. They're just being explored. Another problem is the scientific problem because when you buy fossils, they are collected like this, um, illegally collected, we lose scientific information. So we don't have crucial data like precise location. Um, Virtually all fossils from the area, they don't have a GPS coordinate to go with them. Also, we don't have stratigraphic control. So, um, previous work on control excavations have found that in the Homoalba formation, at least, we have several layers of fossils. So, all these pterosaurs, birds, uh, dinosaurs, crocodiles, have all they come from the same level, from different levels? We have no idea because we don't have this precious information. Also, we have no idea about associated specimens unless you have no, a fish or a plant associated with a pterosaur. That's very little information, really. Also, that's another problem that because of illegal selling, we have several fossils there in private collections, and a few of them are now available to science. So here we have two birds from the brain formation. Okay, so this one was described um, in a book by Dave Martin over there, he's one of the authors. It has been very briefly described, about two pages, perhaps less than this. This is another bird that has been curated in a public institution in Brazil. It has been published um, last year, this year, I don't remember, in Asian Communications. It has a name, it has a holotype number. Anyone here in this room can ask to see this collection. That's another problem. So this has been uh, talked about already, that's the Tropodophis. Um, that's something every snake worker in the world wants to see because it is a four-legged snake that um, supports a fossorial origin. So, of course, every single snake worker wants to see it. So, very recent... Oh, let me show this. So, Dave has given this um, many interviews about the Tropodophis. And I wanted to show this because um, he is in a very comfortable position because 
The snake is in a safe and accessible place for future scientists to research it. However, just recently, a researcher has flown all the way to Zonhofen in Germany, and the snake was not there anymore. It was back to its private collector. So it's a holotype, it's a very important specimen. It's not available to science anymore. Is it just temporarily unavailable? Permanently unavailable? Who knows? So, how can we go from here? Are there any legal ways to study Brazilian fossils? Of course there are. So, um, last time we had a round table about this thing, actually more about commerce, was 15 years ago. A lot has changed in Brazil ever since. So, for instance, we have some major investments in education. In the last 18 years, the number of People having doctorates of PhD in Brazil has gone 468%. We also have new universities, and previous, previously existing universities have been built by. So we are reaching now to places in the country where there was no formal education. Okay? So we have uh, more people working outside the southern and southeastern Brazil, for instance. Um, we also had some govern uh, governmental investments against social inequality. So instead of people selling a fossil for 10 or 20 dollars, they can have um, some money from the government every single month so they don't starve, so they can invest, uh, invest in themselves, in education, in food, whatever they need. Also, how can we then legally deal with communities that live near fossilifer sites? Well, Let's reach out for them. Let's educate them on the importance of preserving fossils instead of just letting them erode the away in the weather. Let's also uh, have some dialogue with the miners. Why not? Not just buy fossils from them. Let's educate them. Let's show them the importance of having fossils in a museum or in a university where they are publicly available for students, for everyone to see. Let's also think about other ways to take these people out of underemployment. How about having paid tourism? Well, we already have ecotourism, right? So in our area now, we have a geopark. That's an opportunity for people to work with fossils, but not by just exploring them. Also, um, how can we paleontologists work legally? So please, this is a plea for everyone to work ethically and within the law. It is possible, yes, to do this. So we can get all relevant authorizations. If you want to come and do work in Brazil, it is possible. Many people do this, and also collaborations are pretty much important. Not only just, oh, I just found this fossil, come study with me, but come do field work with me. Let's get to know each other better. Let's have this experience. That's very important. So we do have some few examples. There are some very fossil sites in Brazil. All the of workers here might know them by name, I guess. Um, for instance, the Cretaceous Bone Group and the Triassic of the Hibernus of Sioux States. We have plenty of fossils over there, and they have not been commercially assaulted so far. So we have dozens of dinosaurs, crocodiles, and also pterosaurs in Bone Group. Here we are. So it has several, um, it has several uh, 500 kilometers of extension. And the Triassic of the Hibernus of Sioux, we have dinosaurs, how we soak and sprinkle stars, cyanodons, the cyanodons. And universities in these places, they have opened um, advanced labs and museums here. So we have around here a museum of paleontology, where people from the city can go and see the fossils. They also have a prep lab over there, so a prep lab just near the outcrops. Very good idea. And also here in the middle of Hugo's Kusu, you also have a the base lab. Um, of course, international collaborations are on the rise in Brazil. You um, well, all have seen already students around here in Europe, in the United States. You might have seen this paper of the Permian Fauna from Brazil. Also, all these people, they done field work together. And as far as I know, they won't talk in jail. And I also have the pleasure to collaborate in this field work that's an Argentinian and Brazilian excavation, the Pleistocene of North Brazil. And also, um, last but not least, paleontologists in Brazil, it's a growing community, we're organizing ourselves better. And we are trying to change things by, for instance, um, lowering the bureaucracy that is, is sometimes so overwhelming. So we have a first here. So for instance, um, 
the, before you have to go all the way, drive three or four hours to go to the ATM and ask for an authorization. Now you can do it online in a formula. Just you know, put in your email and a password, and that's it. Okay? And we also have um, some new laws coming on, but who knows when they will be approved by our deputies. Okay? So thank you very much.